Hi, this is Rob Packard from Medical Device Academy, and this is a short video explaining what you get when you purchase our risk management procedure, SYS010. So let me share my screen and I'll show you the different documents. First document is our risk management procedure, SYS10. Up in the top right-hand corner, we indicate what the draft is. We use this to keep track of the different versions that we've created over time. But when you review and approve the procedure for the first time in your quality system, you're going to delete the draft number and it's going to be revision A. And then as you make revisions, you're going to have B, C, D for the different revisions. I'm listed as the author right now, but when you adopt this procedure into your quality system, you'd indicate you, that you're the author and indicate the effective date of the procedure is when you're approving it or when your training is completed, whichever your um, training procedure specifies. <clears throat> As you go through this procedure, it references the ISO um, 14971 2012 um, standard. That's a European version of the standard. And the reason why it's um, still referenced in here, even though that's an, uh, an obsolete standard for the European system, that is the last time that they did a harmonized standard for risk management. And so the, the current 2019 version of 14971 isn't harmonized with the uh, MDR yet. And so until that's done, uh, I felt it was best to include this as a standard. Once it's harmonized, then we'll be able to obsolete that and include the new harmonized version. We have a references section where we cross link to different procedures that are related. We indicate all the standards. So it's not just the 14971 2012, but the 2019 and the 2020 guidance. Um, we also have a section in here related to the MDR because many of the um, requirements in this procedure are related specifically to uh, sections one through nine of Annex one in the MDR. We give some definitions from the uh, standard here. We indicate who's responsible for the procedure. Um, we cross-reference to a couple other documents, the post-market surveillance process and clinical evaluation report. And the most recent thing we've added is cross references to our forms because we had more than one version of forms. So the, the first reference is to our uh, design and risk management plan, template 21, that's included with the purchase of this procedure. But there's an alternate uh, template that we also provide with this procedure. Um, the next item here is a uh, hmm. Hazard identification, Form 10. After that, we have uh, Form 19, where you can document uh, the traceability to various inputs and outputs, risk controls, and uh, verification of effectiveness of risk controls. And then we have Template 34, a benefit risk analysis that you'd need for any European CE marketing technical files. Um, we talk about other activities like post-market activities related to risk. We have a whole entire section on process risk management. So if you're um, looking at this, not just for design risk management, but also process risk management, we have a separate template for that template or form 25. And then at the very end, we list what monitoring and measuring activities, training requirements would be, risk management of this procedure and records. Um, including all the different forms and that are related to this procedure. Uh, let me show you a couple other things. Here is our design requirements trace matrix. So this is where you can put hazards, design inputs, risk control methods. This incorporates both risk management elements and design elements. So if you don't want to document design elements, you could take those out uh, and just cover the risk management items. But this was intended to be a, a combined uh, traceability matrix. Another item we have is this uh, process failure modes and effects analysis. So this is a, a standard PFMEA document. It has um, severity, occurrence, and detectability, an RPN score, and room to update those scores based on updated um, risk controls that you put in place. We've also got um, our template for, whoop, that's the template for the procedure, sorry. Um, we have a design and risk management plan that I mentioned. This is a combined design and risk management plan. So it covers each of the phases of the design project. 
We also have a risk management plan if you don't want to combine the two. So we have a separate one here. We have a risk management pro report. This would be for a summary technical document indicating the different risk management activities that you've conducted over time. And um, this is specifically was created for software documentation. So we've got um, a bunch of different documents in here indicating uh, what documents you would fill out for a software project. Um, so in case you wanna use that for your risk management activities for software. And then we created another one for the risk benefit analysis that's here. And we have the different sections in the new 24971 guidance document and have included a lot of the things that they're asking for or suggesting should be included in your benefit risk analysis. And the order of it is the order that the FDA would prefer starting with benefits first and then risk estimation and risk controls and then a final comparison. And last but not least, we have a hazard identification form for you to document your hazards, whether you're getting it from uh, the questions that are in Annex A of 24971, or you're getting them from a systematic review of uh, categories of risks in Annex C of 14971-2019. Regardless where you're getting those risks from, maybe a review of previous versions of your device, this is where you would document those risks. So that's everything that I had to show you. Um, for the risk management procedure. If you have any further questions about what's contained in that procedure or need additional training on risk management, we have a few webinars on it. Please let us know. And I hope this was helpful. Have a great day. Bye-bye.